Hello everyone and, and welcome to the uh, latest in the iFormulate Introduces series of free webinars. And today we have the pleasure of welcoming Professor Stephen Abbott who's going to talk you through a quick guide to <coughs> adhesion science. Um, so as we move on, there's a picture of Stephen and myself. I'm going to act today as your host. Um, this webinar is being recorded and the recording of the webinar will be made available to you on a link uh, in the email that will be sent to you in 24 hours. You will also receive a copy of the slides that are being presented today. Um, you are all on mute because we have a number of people on the line. We've had over 100 registered. And you may ask questions during the webinar using the chat function or using the questions function, which we will deal with at the end of the webinar should we have time. And the webinar, we're all aware that you're busy, so this webinar will last no more than 30 minutes. In today's webinar, we'll be talking about why is adhesion important, uh, look at some of the traditional theories of adhesion that you may think are the most relevant ones, uh, talk about the forces involved in adhesion, and then Stephen will, will demonstrate when he's talking about those things, some of the apps that he has developed to try and help you with your adhesion problems. And at the end, we'll talk about a summary and about learning more. But before we actually start, it would be remiss of me not to talk a little bit about iFormulate. You can read here and go to our website. We were founded just about four years ago now by myself and Dr. Jim Bullock. Um, you can read a little bit about all of our, our experience. Um, we've been through many industries and had many, many experiences in different functions, but where we don't uh, have the experience. We do have a complementary network of associates and it's our pleasure today to have one of those uh, speaking to you today, Professor Stephen Abbott. The services we offer at iFormulate, we offer an iFormulate consult service, which is simply um, either could be technology scouting, it could be evaluation of a technology, it could be simple problem solving of a formulation, it could involve some technology assessment or some market assessment. In iFormulate Strategic, we helped with a number of strategic issues in formulation in the UK. Uh, we helped the Royal Society of Chemistry when they were looking at formulation and open data. We helped Scottish Enterprise to look at their formulation network. And we also worked with what was the Chemical Innovation Knowledge Transfer Network at the time um, to put together the business case for the National Formulation Centre, which opened just over a year ago. And today's webinar is part of iFormulate Skills, where we run in-person training courses, our own and on behalf of other people. And we also have a, a set of webinars. And some of our past webinars, you can request a password to view the recordings on our website. So today's webinar on adhesion. So why is it important and uh, in what industry is it important? Well, <laughs> there are many of those industries where you, you may I think, well, it, it just isn't, isn't really important. Inks and coatings, though, it's fairly obvious. If you don't get your ink to stick to the paper or to the packaging, then it's of no use. And if you've been doing a lot of painting, as I have recently, again, you want the paint to stick to the surface that it's there. But there are some other areas where you may not think about formulation as uh, an adhesion as being important in your formulation. Um, but in packaging, it's important. Uh, pressure sensitivities of labels, which Stephen will talk about today, is an obvious one. In home care, you have something, some of the pharmaceutical products um, and some of the home care products, maybe you might not think about fabric tr uh, treatment, but they're there to actually, um, not only that do they need to stick to the fabric, uh, but they also sometimes need to repel dust, so you have an adhesion and an adhesion problem there. In cosmetics, if you look Look at things such as lipstick and mascara, well obviously they're no good unless they actually stick and stay in place. In agrochemicals, if you're looking for a herbicide to work, you want it to actually stay on the leaf and to adhere to the leaf, and if it's an insecticide, then you want it to actually adhere to that target pest. In pharmaceuticals, in areas such as where you're looking at something where you want it to stick to the lining of the throat, there's an adhesion issue there. And also a lot of the new technologies in terms of looking at patches where you're delivering a pharmaceutical, well there obviously you have an adhesion issue. And also in construction, where obviously you need to stick things together. So that should give you an idea of where adhesion is important. I'm now going to hand you over to the uh, main speaker today, Professor Stephen Abbott, who's going to talk you through more of uh, the issues as he sees them. Okay, Stephen, you should be the presenter now. Right, you have the screen and there we go, I'm full screen. Yep, I can see you. I'll go and mute Stephen. 
Thank you. Thank you, David, and good afternoon to everyone. Let me start with the bad news. Most of what we are taught about adhesion science is wrong. I found this for myself in my industrial life, but I find it all around the world when I go and try and help uh, sort out adhesion issues. Most people are taught things which are entirely wrong. This is sad but true. Fortunately, the problem is easily fixed. First of all, I'll show you some simple proofs that some of the bad ideas are wrong. I've got a big app-based website with all the good ideas. They're not my ideas, they're just the standard adhesion science known to a relatively few, but the, the principles aren't uh, a debate. You can find it at uh, my stephenabbott.co.uk practical adhesion. They are free, they run on any browser, laptop, tablet, phone, they're okay for, uh, for industrial, uh, uh, for, your, uh, for your firewalls and things like that, because they're not threatening. I have written a great book, Adhesion Science Principles and Practice, where all the formulae and calculations are actually linked to the Practical Adhesion website. So if you buy the ebook version and you're reading blah, 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 and then there's a formula, you can then click on the link and it takes you straight, straight to the appropriate page on the website. And as we'll see, in, on the 1st of December, I'll be running a, a one-day course. But first, before we tackle the issues of what adhesion science is, how stuck is stuck? We need to agree on units. They are a source of lots of confusion. Work of adhesion, W, is the amount of work in joules needed to separate one square meter of an adhesive joint, so work is in joules per meter squared. Peel, which is entirely different, is the force in newtons required to separate across one meter of joint. So you're pulling up a one meter wide strip of tape, so it's in newtons per meter but it turns out that joules per meter squared and newtons per meter are exactly the same. If you use a dimensional analysis, you'll find that they're both kilograms per square second, whatever that means, uh, but they are identical. So a peel strength of 100 newtons per meter is the same as a work of adhesion of 100 joules per meter squared. And because work equals energy, work of adhesion equals energy of adhesion. Many of you are familiar with dynes per centimeter, and that's millinewtons per meter or millijoules per meter squared. So a typical surface energy of 40 dynes per centimetre is 40 millinewtons per metre or 40 millijoules per metre squared. So that's units. Now let's talk about some numbers. What are the relative strengths? Well, we already know what surface energy is. It's 40 dynes per centimetre, therefore it's 40 millinewtons per metre if you do a peel of a pure surface energy. A post-it note is something like 4 newtons per metre. So already something which is designed to be low adhesion is a hundred times stronger than surface energy. So you'll see that surface energy really isn't important for adhesion. A typical household adhesive tape is easily 100 newtons per meter. If you have a typical peel tester, that's 2.5 newtons per 25 millimeter. And a strong adhesive is therefore in the 400 newtons per meter range. That's 10,000 times stronger than surface energy. Those are numbers. Now let's get a feel for what they mean. If I attach something to a wall with just surface energy, you can do that putting a bit of cling film onto the wall, onto a smooth surface. I've actually done this myself. And when you measure how much it takes to come off, it's about two paper clips, two paper clips across the width of a post-it. So surface energy really isn't very strong. That's not a lot of stuckness. 10 newtons per meter is a one kilogram bag of sugar pulling off 2.5 meters of post-it stuck to a smooth wall. So that's noticeable, but not large. And 800 newtons per meter, that's a pretty strong adhesive, is my 80 kilograms weight. So imagine me uh, peeling off a one meter wide strip of wallpaper, but at least take wallpaper, um, you know, one meter, my whole weight. It's large, but not unimaginable. Okay. Adhesion science is big and complex. I want to grasp it in just nine graphics. Sometimes we need to see the big picture in order to understand the, the little picture. So the first question, and the reason that I've done all this is because there are lots of bad ideas out there. And there's two reasons why I get upset about this. First of all, I don't like bad ideas anyway. But more importantly, they don't help you to formulate or to solve problems. So we really need to know why does stuff stick, and we want to know how to get, say, 100 newtons. Yes, I know this should be 100 newtons per meter, but 
these are simple graphics and the parameter didn't look good. The first thing is it's not mechanical. People often talk about mechanical interlocking and they imagine that one surface and the other surface are like are stuck together like little jigsaw pieces. This notion is simply false. Don't believe me? Believe for Professor Kevin Kendall, one of the true greats in adhesion science in his wonderful book, Molecular Adhesion. It's impossible. So it's, you know, it's not just zero, it's just impossible for it to happen. Except, of course, for adhesives into paper, board, and non-wovens, where the adhesive can wrap around the, the threads. That's a separate issue. But for generalized adhesion, there is no mechanical interlocking. Zero. Surface energy, it's too weak. So we, we all know that surface energy is of 40 dynes, 40 millinewtons per meter, and strong adhesion is more than 40 newtons per meter, so surface energy is 1,000 times too small. At this point, it, people uh, invariably shout at me, ah, yes, but if you don't have a high surface energy, you can't coat the adhesive, um, and therefore you won't get adhesion. Well, yes, that's trivially true, uh, but as, as it turns out, it's only half the story. There's a much more interesting aspect to whether you can coat your adhesive and it's not a surface energy effect. That's for a different story. And it's not chemical bonds. Now this sounds insane. We all know that to get a good strong adhesion we need to have good strong chemical bonds at the interface. Even 100% chemical bonds across an interface gives less than one newton per meter. So typical chemical bonding is much too weak. Now I'll go to the first app to explain what I mean. Uh, as I always have to find uh, the app, there we go, right. So there's a wonderful book, Structures or Why Things Don't Fall Down by a guy called Gordon. And he says, it turns out that the total energy needed to break all the bonds to any one plane or cross section in most technologically relevant materials is very much the same and does not differ widely from one joule per meter squared. So even if you have a really strong material with total bonds up the interface, you can only get one joule per meter squared. And this number actually comes from glass. And the app does the calculations for you. Let's say we have one bond every 10 square nanometers. And let's say that the bond is a typical carbon-carbon or carbon-oxygen bond, 350 kilojoules per all. You can read the formula, um, but it's got Avogadro's number and a few things like that. And when you do the calculation with these numbers, you get 0.06 joules per meter squared, i.e. just slightly more than you get from surface energy. If I go for all out and have 10 bonds for 10 square nanometers, which is pretty hard to do, you're only up to 0.58 joules per meter squared. So chemical bonds on their own are completely useless for uh, the sort of adhesion we want. And the reason is that pure chemical bonds like this are brittle. The one joule per meter squared from Gordon is glass. You put a crack into the glass and it comes apart very easily. We do not want brittle chemical bonds. Intermingling helps. So now I'm turning to the positive. If across an interface I can get polymer chains, so these are supposed to illustrate polymer chains either side, intermingling, interdigitating, you know, put your fingers uh, together, um, then you start to get some adhesion. There's a very simple, a very powerful formula from De Gen, the Nobel Prize winner, and it tells you this will some, get something like one newton per meter, which is not bad, and with some other effects you can get something, you know, like, something like 10. So if intermingling helps, and it does, then we should start working out how to get that intermingling. If you've got one polymer going onto another polymer surface, then you have to make sure that those polymers are compatible using, for example, Hansen solubility parameters. Uh, and if you're trying to adhere to something like aluminum, then you need to put on a primer so that you can get intermingling. And that primer had better not be just a short molecule because you cannot get much intermingling. The amount of adhesion you get depends on the intermingling overlap. So intermingling helps and already you can start formulating proper ideas of how to get better adhesion. But the real secret is that entanglement is strong. If you want strong adhesion, go for entanglement. Getting polymer chains entangled physically or equivalently via chemical crosslinks gives strong adhesion. It's tangles exactly like tangles in a ball of wool or a ball of string. And the point about having a tangle in a ball of wool is that if you're patient like my wife and you have a tangle, you pull very, very gently, patiently, you can actually sometimes get the tangle out. 
But if you're like me, you start and say, oh, screw this and pull hard, then you make the tangle even worse because the whole ball of wool or string absorbs all the energy you're trying to put in to get it to separate. And the point about chemical bonds is that they can give uh, cross links which are, are equivalent to entanglement and therefore you can get strong entangled adhesion. But too much of a good thing is a bad thing. If you overdo the cross-linking, if you make a cross-link everywhere across the interface, you end up in the chemical bonding situation of just one joule per meter squared. So there are many cases in uh, many formulators' experience, certainly my own, where we've tried too hard and have been very puzzled as to why more cross-linking, more UV failed, uh, but actually it's a universal phenomenon and has a very you know, deep explanation. The reason entanglement is strong is because dissipation is strong. What we are fighting against is the propagation of a crack. If you start to have a crack at an interface and that crack tries to travel along, but as it travels along, all the energy of that crack is absorbed in, for example, a few nanometers of entangled material, or when you've got a weak polymer such as a PSA, if it's being absorbed over microns or millimeters of distorting polymer, then that crack energy isn't going very far. It's really like absorbing energy, uh, like chewing gum. If, you're, if this is your shoe stuck to some chewing gum on the sidewalk and uh, pulling it up, it's a lot of energy just being absorbed by this soft polymer. So if we spent as much if we spent more time talking about entanglement and dissipation rather than surface energy, we'd advance our adhesion much more. Now, what we love as scientists is an objective measure of the thing we're trying to optimize. So if we have an objective measure of our adhesion, then we can optimize it. The trouble is, in most cases, a simple objective test of our adhesion does not exist. All tests for adhesion, bar some simple uh, examples, are indirect. Our adhesion, the, the value we measured, are influenced by many factors other than the interfacial adhesion. And that's because, so I'll leave you that dot, dot, dot for the moment. So measurement is tricky. Uh, everyone has tests which they don't like, and there's not a lot we can do about it. So adhesion, measurement is tricky because it's influenced by many factors other than interfacial adhesion because, and this is the most important part of this whole webinar, da -da, adhesion is a property of the system. You must always think of the whole system to know if you have strong enough adhesion. Now that sounds like great rhetoric. I want to show it live with another app. So uh, again, these examples are from Prof Professor, Kevin, Professor Kevin Kendall, uh, so they're right. We have the same material stuck together in three different ways. This happens to be a rubber without uh, any actual adhesive, so this is pure surface energy. But I'm illustrating it for, I'm showing you this for other reasons. We have it tested in peel, so we have a work of adhesion W, we have a width of sample, so that's coming in and out of the plane of the screen, a typical 25 millimeter width of tape or something is being pulled up at 90 degrees. And the force to pull it apart is the work of adhesion times the width. Here we have a lap joint, same material, same width, uh, B, uh, here, uh, and the same work of adhesion. The force needs to pull it apart uh, clearly, obviously, depends on this overlap length. And obviously, the more overlap length we have, the stronger the adhesion. But adhesion is a property of the system, and if you look at the formula, the L does not appear. Above a certain minimum L, the overlap length makes no difference at all. So it depends on the width and the work of adhesion, that's fine, but it also depends on E, the modulus, and H, the thickness of the adherent. And this is a butt joint where ideally you're trying to pull up vertically, it's very hard to do, but that's the ideal. And uh, the diameter of this is comparable to the width, and the force is 10 pi where, times uh, the modulus times the cube of this diameter. So already we've got a cubed term, uh, where it's linear here, so that's telling us something. Let's see what that, how that pans out in the apps. Here's the same thing, the same three cases. And I've got a work of adhesion of 0.04 joules per meter squared, 40 dynes. I've got 25 millimeter width, a 0.1 gigapascal modulus, and a thickness 50. So the peel strength is just 0.04 times 25, and that's 1 millinewton 
very weak. If I try to pull the lap joint apart, I actually need half a Newton, i.e. we are 500 times greater force needed to break this thing apart than the peel. And if I do a butt, butt joint, I need uh, 1,005 Newtons. I, I'm um, sorry, 15 Newtons. I, I'm 15,000 times stronger than surface energy. Remember, these are the same materials, just with surface energy, and yet the forces needed to pull them apart are hugely different. If I change the thickness, then the strength of the lap joint changes. If I change the modulus, the strength of both the lap and the butt joint change. And of course, the peel doesn't change. So if three very simple cases like this depend on many factors other than the quotes adhesion, then uh, when you come to real life things as in your own work, you can imagine that your system is much more important. I want to end with two more slides. The first is uh, if you go to any article on adhesion, you say uh, you have modes of adhesion. And they all show a list like this. They are all wrong. I'm sorry, guys, but they are all wrong. The list says that physical absorption of surface energy is important. Well, we've already, already found out that it's not. They say that chemical bonding is important. Well, actually, it's not. Diffusion, uh, people argue about this. Actually, what they mean is intermingling and entanglement. If they uh, properly understood it, they would be emphasizing diffusion. But many people say, oh, diffusion isn't important. Russians love to say electrostatic. They happen to be wrong and many people talk about mechanical interlocking, and they're wrong. So this list is wrong, and again, it doesn't help you formulate good adhesives or troubleshoot problems. The correct list is uh, the one on the right. Surface energy is weak and useless except for geckos. If you want light gecko-style adhesion, go for it. Chemical bonds are surprisingly weak, often useless, or worse. I, if you try too hard with chemical bonds, you can take a perfectly good adhesive system and destroy it. Intermingling and entanglement, this is most to strong adhesion with chemical crosslinks equivalent to entanglement. Dissipation, a large element of much of strong adhesion, entanglement leads to dissipation, and it's most of pressure sensitive adhesives. And all of the above should only be applied in the context of the system. So congratulations, after half an hour you're all adhesion experts. In fact, just these principles will get you a long way. Once you work out and your colleagues understand that surface energy is a thousand times too weak to be relevant, that's very liberating. Mechanical interlocking is non-existent, you don't start trying to roughen the surface and all that sort of nonsense, it doesn't work. Chemical bonding on its own is surprisingly weak and often we've tried too hard to get chemical bonds and made matters worse. Generally we just need entanglement and dissipation for real strength. How you get that, that's a different topic, uh, but that's the key thing and adhesion is a property of the system. So you can actually do quite a lot with this. If you spend a day on uh, the uh, adhesion science for formulators course, you'll get a deeper, fuller understanding. Guaranteed. See you on the 1st of de uh, December. Over to you, David. Thank you, Stephen. Um, it's always enlightening to hear Stephen's views on things, and, and they tend to uh, help you to see things um, in a different light and to, to bunk some of those myths. So Stephen says he will be our trainer on a one-day training workshop which we're running on the 1st of December 2016. Um, this is actually being run in Sheffield at Meadow Hall. Um, so you can see more details on the actual agenda and how to register if you follow the link on the slides uh, to the website. Um, what he will do as you've seen today is look at some of the popular myths of adhesion, look at some of the real science that underpins adhesion. Um, I, I think the most important thing on all training courses is not just to have an academic principle, but actually how would you apply that to real life problems, and Stephen will demonstrate that and also be able to answer your own questions. Uh, he'll also give you a much more detailed look at those apps that he's written uh, and developed. Um, on practical adhesion and uh, the outcome of the day you'll become a much better formulator of both sticky and non-sticky products so Stephen does do a section on adhesion during the day. So if we just move on, just trying to move on, so um, you are still remaining muted but we, we do have some questions so Stephen I've got uh, what I think is going to be question for you. It comes from a gentleman who has actually worked with Kevin Kendall at ICI 
uh, in his early days. And he says, I've got a lot of experience adhering rubber sheets to metal. They require roughening to provide adhesion. If mechanical interlocking is not important, what is going on? Uh, great question. Um, a lot of what goes on with metal sheets is getting rid of the unknown crap on the surface of the metal. So um, in the full course, you, uh, it's clear you can't build a castle on sand, and you have all sorts of uncertain things on the surface of metal, and one of the things about rubbing is that you get down to a more controlled surface, um, and whatever your rubber uh, interactions with that surface is are now more controlled. In all the checks I've had of, of uh, people rubbing uh, metals to enhance adhesion, um, that is the biggest single theme which comes out, that it's getting down to a known controlled surface. And a lot of the subsequent things one does to metals is to make that surface even more known. So yes, you've got an oxide surface on aluminum, but you want a particular type of oxide surface on aluminum for reliable adhesion. So you use your primers and things to get exactly the surface you want, and then the rest follows. Okay, thank you for that, Stephen. As he says, we'll go into that in much more detail on the training course. Um, if you have any, we're going to leave the questions for today at that one. If you have any follow-up questions or other inquiries, you can email info at iformulate.biz, or you can get in touch directly with myself or Stephen at the email addresses that were on the slides and that you've seen on these. As I said at the beginning, you'll be sent details in 24 hours of how to access a recording of this webinar, and also you'll be sent on the same link uh, the ability to download the slides that have been used in this webinar. We do plan on holding at least one more free webinar before the end of the year, and now you're on our distribution list, you will be sent details of that and how to register. If you're interested in looking at previous webinars, they're going on our website if you follow that link, and you'll be able to see training courses that we have planned. So at that stage, I'd just like to once again thank Stephen very much for the presentation today and the insight into adhesion, and thank everyone for their attention today, and wish you a pleasant day. Thank you very much. Goodbye.